So we're talking about knapsack coin joins today. Um, I'm just going to run through this slide and then uh, hopefully Felix will jump in uh, to clarify uh, questions as they come or if I make a, a mistake. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the paper, Anonymous Coin Joint Transactions with Arbitrary Values. Uh, we have one of the authors with us. Um, uh, the PowerPoint, uh, this PowerPoint will be made available if anyone wants it. Um, very straightforward. Um, so what's the problem in Bitcoin? Transactions are public. Uh, transactions point to previous transactions in a, in a sort of directed acyclic graph and transactions can leak future spending. Um, and so that's, that's the problem. We're trying to obfuscate the transaction graph. Um, so a simple idea from 2013 or even earlier is, is just joining transactions. So uh, suppose you have two transactions on the, on the left here. Uh, we have uh, uh, two transactions um, with two inputs and two outputs. One output is likely uh, sending money somewhere and another output is change. What we could simply do is we could take transactions and we could just essentially collapse them uh, together. Uh, so uh, there's nothing in Bitcoin that uh, bars us from doing this currently at the moment. And uh, yeah. Um, so how does this look like? On our left, we have two uh, unique transactions by two individuals, and I've highlighted in red uh, the output that likely represents um, uh, sending funds to a third party or to, a, to someone else. And on the right, what we do is we just take those inputs and outputs and we merge them into a single transaction. Um, now, when we look at this from the outside, um, we, we have to ask ourselves, is it possible to, uh, to unravel the previous transaction that we, uh, uh, the, the two sub-transactions we uh, merge together? Um, so we can start by taking an output like this one here, uh, valued at 50, and we could try to find inputs that exactly match the value of the sum of the outputs. So in this case, we try these two, and it turns out there's no way we could come up with an output on the right that would match the two inputs on the left. And uh, we try again, and we find that, yes, actually, we can break this transaction down into uh, uh, two pieces once again, because we see that uh, the bottom two uh, inputs and the bottom two outputs equal exactly 64, and the top two inputs and two outputs exactly equal 33. Um, we're excluding transaction fees in this model for simplicity. Um, and so essentially what happens is we take this, this single transaction and we split it into two once again, and we're left with the same privacy that uh, we would have had uh, before we did any of this uh, joining. Um, so this isn't very uh, good. So uh, um, uh, most of the time we'll be able to unravel these transactions. So if, if we if we look at the, the work done by... Um, uh, in this paper, what they've done is they formalized some some basic ideas. So you know, transactions have inputs, outputs, and and, and values. Uh, inputs, um, you know, we have the input set, the output set, and then we have coins which belong either to the inputs or the outputs. And then a very basic rule, which is that the sum of the inputs must equal the sum of the outputs for any subset that we create. Um, so uh, a coin joint transaction consists of sub-transactions, and there must be at least one way of partitioning all inputs and outputs so that each subset of inputs has exactly one corresponding subset of outputs uh, with which it forms a sub-transaction. And essentially what this means is that if we take uh, a transaction, we must be able to cut it up in such a way, just like we did before, where a subset of the inputs matches some subset of the outputs in terms of value. Uh, and we call this a mapping as it maps inputs to outputs. Um, so uh, we have a set of all partitions denoted uh, phi of, of a set, and then the set of all inputs, set of all outputs, and then set of all mappings is big M. And essentially the set of all mappings uh, below here is just the set of all, um, uh, I think it's bijective mappings of inputs to outputs um, of the superset such that the sum of the inputs equals the sum of the outputs. Um, so again, this is just saying that we can take a transaction and 
um, and create a list of all possible ways we could cut it up. Essentially, figuring out different ways we could we could uh, get sub transactions, um, and the entire list of all ways we could cut it up is denoted M. Um, I hope I haven't lost anyone so far, but a good idea to maybe pause and ask. Did ha have I lost anyone so far? No, I think it's a, it's a great introduction. I just want to say for some administration that uh, since Felix appeared in this in this conversation, uh, welcome Felix. He's one of the author of the paper, and I think uh, after your presentation, we could uh, move on to pick his brain, and in order to not uh, waste his time too much, and 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 then after that we can. Uh, move on to other people's presentations and ideas and discussions uh, about that. Yeah, so uh, this is pretty much uh, almost over. I think we're probably two thirds of the way through. So um, uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll be able to ask Felix uh, questions directly. So um, yeah, now moving on to uh, results. So yeah, in simpler terms, we wanna be able to break down transactions into sub transactions. Um, um, combination of inputs and outputs. Um, in the paper, they they clarify between derived and non-derived subtransactions. Um, what that means is that a non-derived subtransaction is uh, is uh, a subtransaction that isn't composed of smaller subtransactions uh, inside of it, and we're only concerned with non-derived subtransactions um, for simplicity. So, um, so the way that we look at anonymity or privacy in this model is we essentially take a transaction which has all these inputs and outputs and it has all these mappings, all the possible ways we could cut up the transaction. And we essentially say that a specific coin on the left-hand side and any other coin on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side is linked is, is linked to that coin in, in a probability, probabilistic way, depending on how many mappings of the total mappings there are how many of them include the two uh, coins being in the same sub-transaction. Um, so uh, I think there's probably an easier way to think about this. Here it is formalized in the paper, but um, intuitively it makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and I think we'll see an example of it in just the next slide. Um, but that's the idea, it's a probabilistic framework. So in, in this case here, um, if, we, if we go back and, and recreate uh, what we did, um, and we split these up into two sub-transactions. Uh, yeah, we, we would say that, um, for example, uh, output three is directly linked to input three uh, with 100% um, probability because there's only one way to partition this coin join um, and output three appears with input three 100% uh, of the time. And we'll see later how that can uh, that can be done differently. Um, so in the paper, they essentially uh, 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 create uh, or, or uh, create a bunch of random transactions, and then uh, essentially purposefully combine them together, and then uh, observe the, the the time it takes to uh, 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 to recreate the sub transactions from the coupled transactions. So you know here we see that. Uh, in the orange, you know, if you have five sub transactions with, uh, I believe it's, um, yeah, so five sub transactions with uh, with four inputs each, then it takes about a second for a computer to be able to uh, unravel um, um, uh, that in, uh, that uh, coin join into its relevant uh, sub transactions. Um, and then we notice here that the number of non-derived mappings. Um, isn't very high, um, uh, even as there are, uh, you know, as many as, you know, four or five sub-transactions because, uh, like we did in the first example, um, we can typically um, unravel uh, coin joins and have very little uh, uh, overlap in terms of other ways we could map inputs and outputs. Um, so, the, in here, we see that only with six subtransactions and four inputs per subtransaction do we see um, more than just a few uh, uh, non-derived mappings. Um, so there's a solution to this problem because uh, right now what we see is that it doesn't take a lot of time 
to unpack uh, uh, these coin joins. And when you do, there are very few non-derived mappings, which means there's very little ambiguity in ter terms of what's linked. Um, so could we increase this? Well, you know, here's knapsack mixing. Uh, the idea is, is how to f uh, optimize filling a knapsack with various uh, uh, things of different weights. Um, in this case, we're trying to optimize the way uh, to have outputs so that they fill uh, given inputs. So the uh, algorithm is pretty simple. The idea is to compare um, the two output sets and to uh, essentially try to break down one of the outputs um, it, so that one of the values of the output is the difference between the two sets. Uh, so in this case, the number 31 is the difference between the green and the orange. And so here we've done it with, uh, we, you can see that we've uh, split up uh, th uh, the 50 into 31, 19. And on the right, we've recombined them to make a single coin joint transaction. And now when we try to figure out uh, the subtransactions, we actually get two subtransactions. We get this one here, which connects the two on the left with the three on the right, but we also get this subtransaction here. And so uh, the result is that if you asked, uh, for example, is O1 linked with I3? Uh, the answer is that there's a 50-50 chance uh, that O1 and I3 are linked because of the two subtransactions that we have, in half of them, O1 and I3 are not linked and in the other half they are. Uh, did I lose you or you lost me? have a, a probability of one to be matched with another input or another output. Uh, yeah, right. The, the, so the left graph shows the number of pairs of inputs and outputs that are linked with probability one. And the right one shows the number of input input pairs that are linked with a probability of one, always depending on which knapsack mixing algorithm you've used. So I think in the paper I had two different versions of the knapsack mixing algorithm, yes. one which I called input mixing and one output mixing. And I, I think I even hinted at a third one that I came up with later in the, in the time when I was writing the paper. So uh, this one even improved the over what you see in the graphs so far. Okay, well, very cool. Um, so I, I think the important thing to note here is that we still have a problem where some inputs are connected with other inputs and some inputs are connected with other outputs. So we don't have a perfect, uh, uh, um, we, we have some coins that are, are, are achieving no additional anonymity except for the computational complexity that it takes to, to unravel the, the coin join. Um, so this is pretty much the end here. Uh, um, there's some anonymity here in the com computational complexity um, that's required to um, to figure out how to break down these coin joins, especially if we start talking about, you know, 10 participants, 30 participants, 50 participants. Um, uh, there's still a link between inputs and outputs. Um, the entire subtransaction partition must be known in order to apply the algorithm. This is the most important uh, trade-off, I think, is that currently... Uh, from, from what I've read, it, it seems that this 
can't be done in a, in a trustless um, way where someone isn't coordinating all the transactions. Yeah, and that's exactly the third algorithm I came up with. Um, I will have to <laughs> read my own work again to understand what I did because it's, I think, two years now that I was working on it. But um, I had a third version of the algorithm which was working without knowing all the outputs. So for each, I, everybody knows needs to know all the inputs, but each participant only needs to know his own outputs. Okay, so would it be uh, uh, everybody just needs to know all the inputs? Um, okay, so interesting. Um, so upper bound anonymity is still like uh, if we look at uh, this way of looking at transaction anonymity and we apply it to zero link, um, uh, we see that zero link is like a perfect knapsack coin join. Um, so that sort of provides us the upper bound anonymity, which is essentially the number of total participants that are doing this uh, this knapsack coin join. Um, I, I and also don't agree with a lot of things here, and uh, I think this is your your last slide. So can yes. we come back to it later and discuss everything, every concluding thoughts one by one? Sure, sure. So uh, yeah, I'll le I'll leave it. To, to Felix, because um, that's pretty much the it uh, for uh, introducing the paper. Yeah, so, so, so thank you, Aviv. It's a, it's a nice introduction to get everyone catch up with the paper, and we can go into the details uh, here and there. Um, I was thinking that if Felix appears, then we would, uh, we would start with some questions to Felix, and then we would continue with the uh, if if anyone has some some small presentations then then we would continue with those and then we would um, end up with discussions questions uh, what did we not understood uh, in the in the paper although this could be bring uh, bring here right now because Felix is, is still here so and we would finally discuss some some things like like if, if you have any ideas that that came to your mind uh, with this paper and then we would end with uh, this and we uh deciding on what should be the next paper on next week so uh let's 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 start with let, let, let's start with with with, with some some more more fun things uh, felix i i would like to to know what was the story behind the knapsack paper how how did you come work with work on it and yeah uh, can you tell us about it yeah of course um actually it started as my master thesis so um more or less the when the most of the content of the paper is also my master thesis um, I omitted a bit of, um, yeah, more of the related work, which was also a big part of my thesis. And um, some the some of the results have not been part of my thesis, but more or less the idea and the the general, um, yeah, most of the work is is basically my master thesis. Master thesis. So uh, after I finished the thesis, I was I wrote a paper based on it. And I think um, the one interesting thing is also that the knapsack, the term knapsack for this mixing is not um, it's not my my idea. It was uh, I picked up the idea from two papers, which um, yeah, basically in one or two sentences described that something like this could be done, but did not really go into it. So yeah, this is a how I came uh, up with this idea or why I started working on this idea. Uh, nice. And uh, did you follow up on, on since writing the paper or, or what are you, what did you move on to? Uh, no, actually, um, I started after my thesis, I started uh, doing a PhD at the RWTH in Aachen. But uh, after a year, after one year, I, I yeah, realized that it's not the right environment for me 
So I moved on and I'm now working at a Fraunhofer Institute, which is not at all related to what I've done before. So unfortunately, since two years, I'm not working on the topic at all anymore. Mm, I see anyone has any general questions. I, I have more more in topic questions now. Hi, uh, well, I would like to know um, about the, the test, uh, the validation of this uh, hypothesis. If you have published the, the source code for this paper. Uh, <laughs> that, that would be my question too. <laughs> yeah, yes, actually I have. I have uh, published the code that I was used to um, produce the results of the paper. Um, I'm not sure if it's linked anywhere, but I, it's a public repository on GitLab. Uh, let me paste the link for you. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. It's, uh, most of the difficulties I, I encountered is the deciphering the, the pseudo code. Uh, yeah um no uh, all the the I, I was just looking into the code everything's there um the in it's written in rust i don't know if you have experience with rust but it should be readable for anybody um using is, who is used to imperative languages um the i think the interesting part is on the main in the main source folder the distribution dot um, rs file uh, in there are the the different mixing algorithms that I used. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, Lucas here wrote code for it too, and actually I wrote code for it too. Uh, yeah, perfect. So we can we can validate. I I have one last question that only you can answer is that. Um, on the paper at the end, you you wrote that. However, currently our output splitting algorithm requires knowledge of all subtransactions. Using it in a peer-to-peer -peer network would likely leak information to all participants. We are already researching a new output splitting algorithm that mitigates this problem. Uh, yes, this is exactly the. The third um, mixing algorithm that I developed was at the end of writing the paper, so it is not part of the paper anymore, unfortunately. It was finished shortly after the paper. Um, let me see. Uh, it's in the code. It's uh, this line. Um, basically, uh, the idea is that um, you broadcast uh, to all participants all the inputs but you can also do that in a fashion that uh, you don't know the which input belongs to which participant and then you can split your own outputs based on the all the inputs that you that you've seen without telling anybody all the outputs yeah that, that's excellent uh, sorry, wh where are you sharing the links? <laughs> uh, in the Hangouts chat. I, I saved them. Yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so that 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 was all my questions. That uh, only Felix could answer. Uh, any anyone has any questions to Felix? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I, okay. <laughs> okay. Me, I, I go again. Um, about the two things. First, uh, I was playing with this concept for a while, and uh, what I do is I sort the outputs, the sending by um, amount. Uh, just to, to, it's just a special case, right? Um, and I use two outputs. One is the payment, another is the change. And 
I realized that in this scheme, uh, with this uh, modification, uh, well, I don't know if it's with this modification only, but uh, it creates, uh, for example, 1.5 outputs for each original output. For example, if I have a two participant uh, coin join with four outputs, it creates six outputs. Um, if I have um, three participants with two outputs, I mean six outputs in total, it creates nine outputs. And that, I don't know if you have some comments about this, but I was to to know how many participants uh, are in that coin join. Um, is it that I'm doing something wrong or or is it just because I'm sorting the the outputs or, or, or well I can answer my question just by <laughs> by coding a bit more but I don't know if it's something that you can share with us about that. Um, no that's actually an aspect that I uh, didn't look into uh, one other um, aspect that I did not look into is um, uh, f uh, answering the question whether um, looking at multiple knapsack mixed coin tran transactions would allow you to then again um, establish stronger links between inputs and outputs. So this is something I, I would look into. Okay, and my second question is about the fee, because in the paper you don't analyze the fee, you say that basically that the fee uh, adds some kind of noise, right? So you, you cannot uh, match the partitions by equality, because the, the, the input, the sum of the inputs and the sum of the outputs are not equal, so it, it will be uh, a bit harder to 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 find the the, the, the sub transactions but what I, I was playing with this concept and I, I don't know if you have some idea about what's the the best way to handle the 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 the, the feed because if the participants use the same uh, fee rate that is, for example, pretty common in, for example, in in, in Wasabi, right? Um, then no, uh, no. Yeah, I was actually trying to to, to create this transactions, this this analysis on Wasabi transactions, and it's it's really bad because we can go up to one percent plus mining fees and 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 this unreliability makes it really interesting so to say uh, uh, well yes what, what i mean is that if if the coordinator one coordinator that uh, is coordinating this knapsack transaction right uh, if everybody uses the same fee rate even the inputs are bigger than the outputs, so they pay more, more fee. Uh, if they pay proportional to the to their transactions, uh, then uh, that give us a clue about. I mean, I can find the the sub transactions, right? The partitions, and and check if the if the if the fee paid matches the the, the some transaction or not so i um, it is a strong clue uh, for the for the chain analyzer uh, so do you have felix any idea how to handle this uh, what can we do? Any idea? Um, actually, no. I, my, I, I, to analyze it, I implemented an algorithm which iter um, enumerates all the possible sub, -sum, uh, sub sets of the inputs and outputs and tries to match them. So, um, yeah, I think 
when I and I don't know, I don't remember how I did it, but I, sp I sped it, uh, speeded it up with a bloom filter, um, and I'm I realized that implementing a fast algorithm is should probably intuitively be more difficult if the sums did not match. So um, my thinking was that maybe it does not make the mathematical problem harder, but it makes it much harder to implement an efficient algorithm to actually find all the possible mappings, all the possible partitions. Yes, that, that's clear because I'm suffering with that problem. It, it, is, <laughs> it is really hard because you say, okay, it has to match, uh, it is hard to in a, in a range, right? It has to, okay, if it is more or less this value so yes it's a pain in the ass but um, uh, my, 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 and you cannot use and you cannot use a bloom filter of course so you have to keep it in memory what is what is even worse but um, the question was about uh, how to how can we um, make the make the, the participants pay a fee in such a way that it doesn't provide additional information to the chain analyzers. Mm, I'm, I'm not sure whether it actually provides additional information. I would have to think about it um, because it would only provide more information if it would um, help you distinguish between subsets that are more likely the real um, or mappings that are more likely the real mappings than others, right? Yeah, I, uh, I agree that it, it doesn't provide additional information. It makes it even harder to to do the the analysis. And I, no. I, I did the analysis with the precision and the only real difficulty with that analysis is how do you set the precision and what i realized for normal coin joints you can set the precision as the mining fee because the mining fee is the maximum amount one participant can pay with joint market transactions it's mining fee plus uh, a random, I, I don't know what, what it should be, random, whatever the, the, the joint market transaction agreement was on the fees that the taker pays for the makers. On Wasabi, it's a mining fee plus 1% and that introduces a bunch of reliability, unreliability, of course. So, so yeah, it's, it's a, I don't see how it would provide more information. No, it, it does. It, it provides more information. In fact, uh, I mean, if you, for example, you know that the, the fee rate is, I don't know, one. Yes? And you have no, no, all the no, subpartitions. No. Oh, no. Explain it. What does it mean, one? Okay. A, one Satoshi per byte. If okay. the fee rate is one Satoshi per byte, for example, so and you use you, you see that the you you can take all the, the the partitions, right, and say okay, this this the sum of these inputs, yes, minus the sum of these outputs gives you the fee, right? So that fee. Uh, given the, the size of the transaction, uh, you know how much it paid. Uh, what is the you don't fee know rate? Who paid so, the fee. You don't know who paid the fee. There are many participants. It could be that only one participant paid the fee. It could be that all of them paid together. Yes, well, in, in, in that case, if only one paid the fee, okay, yes, it makes sense, but in in that case also also is is a problem because you can say okay if it match exactly yes then this is one of those that didn't pay any fee. Many exactly but I don't understand. 
if the sum if the sum of the input and the sum of the outputs then you can say that this participant did not pay anything why why would you have yes. to say that there are many other sub uh, mappings that yes. could be possible even if you found one that that added up like that if, if you find other mappings that, that those are just as likely as, as that your first impression I, I think I understand what you mean Lucas um, so if all the participants pay exactly the same fee and we have one mapping where all the input the difference between the inputs and the outputs ma exactly matches this fee then we would assume that this must be the true mapping but i'm not yes. sure whether there would only be one such mapping uh, well yes but uh, in in the in the runs that i that i made i found a lot of mappings but some mappings have only two inputs right and other mappings have six inputs yes but if if i know that they pay one satoshi per byte and the fee paid was x i don't know yes so i i can know which of those mappings is the real one because one will be paying exactly one satoshi per byte and the other one will be paying a lot less because they have a lot more inputs so it's a more it's a bigger sub transaction so i know that sub transaction cannot be the real one because it's paying uh, less than than the expected uh, fee uh, so, so you mean when you have multiple mappings and then the the difference between the inputs and outputs of sub transactions should be proportional to the number of inputs and outputs and then you would know that is likely the mapping yes exactly exactly yeah hmm, could be um I mean, uh, obviously, I have to add, this is more or less um, an empirical analysis. It's not really um, yeah, a mathematical proof of this concept. So I, I think the idea is really good, and I think it would, would work um, co uh, combined because of the reason that it's, it's uh, likely infeasible to find out which mapping is correct um, and also difficult to actually find the mappings once the transactions get big enough but it's not uh yeah it's not provably correct or provably anonymous in in a in a more strict sense i guess okay one one more question just i'm curious um your analysis how many uh, sub transactions uh, inputs outputs did you did you use i mean did you try with bigger with a bigger number of of participants with more inputs and more outputs than those uh, in the in the paper uh, actually no and the reason was that the the time it took to to uh, find the mappings would just grew too much and it i didn't uh it didn't run on on my workstation i had a, a bit bigger server with a uh, lot of lots of ram and multiple cores i think uh 64 cores not obviously um you could have a really much bigger um yeah a bigger computing a computer or server or server farm but yeah the, for, our, for us, it was really the case that it became just too difficult to find all the, or not not too difficult, but um, it took too much time to find all the mappings. Yes, I, I, I know. I, I try with eight participants, uh, yes, with eight sub transactions, and it was running all all the day and didn't finish. So I, 
I cancelled it <laughs> in the process. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And if my analysis of the theoretically uh, theoretical complexity is not completely wrong, then um, yeah, it's I I think it uh, the computing time it takes depending on the inputs and output really increases. Uh, by a lot when you increase the inputs and outputs. I, I, I have it here, but I, it's not written down in a, in an easy, in a easy way. Uh, I think two to the power of n times m, where n is the, uh, which n is, set of size n. Uh, are you talking about? Yes. The band number or your lower bound estimation? Uh, my my lower bound estimation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I yeah, it, it's I, I think it makes sense uh, what I've read uh, on the internet uh, on Wikipedia that the best uh, best algorithms known for subset sum. So for solving subset sum is still exponential. Yeah, so I think uh, if you would, I mean, uh, in the, the the sizes of the of this mixed transactions in the paper, I think should be only um, in an academical setting. If you have, if you can automate it, and the the idea was, you can join. And arbitrary um, uh, transactions because the, the um, sum or the the value of the inputs doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be a fixed amount for each input. And then you can create for each transaction that you do. You can create with other peers uh, for each transaction such a coin join transaction of a of a huge size if enough people use the same wallet at the same time. Since we are going into it, I, I, I'd like to say an idea of mine that uh, one of the most frequent question in Wasabi was that uh, why why do we have the hundred anonymity set and, and like that? But and and the reason is because I sent out emails and that seemed like the consensus that oh, okay that, that that should be fine. 100 participant, but uh, your lower bound estimation could actually give us a mathematic formula to to set a minimum participant, right? Uh, for for any coin joins, okay, you 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 kind of need at least this many participants in order to make the in order to reach this computational. Uh, hardness in deciphering the coin joins. Does that make sense, guys? Uh, I think the the uh, theoretical bound is difficult to translate in a concrete amount of time it needs to find the partitioning. Um, it, it, but it's really it's only really good for explaining how fast it gets more complex or how fast the time increases that you need to find a partition uh, depending on the number of people who participate yeah yes so it, it, it's 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 not a perfect fit but the main problem is that there must be a number chosen of What's the minimum number of participants that uh, we, we would want to do? And uh, that's that's why I saw this this formula. Your your lower bound estimation would be actually somewhat useful in in deciding on that number that we kind of choose, let's say arbitrarily or with, <laughs> with educated guesses. I don't know. Yes, I guess you could, um, based on the time it takes for some simple examples, you could extrapolate using that function for more complex cases where more participants with more inputs to, uh, take part. All right. Oh, one more thing. Uh, 
I remember in the in the in the paper you said that um, if you uh, spend that one of those outputs in another knapsack transaction, yes, um, the difficulty uh, could be similar to the one. I mean, the problem of finding all the the mappings, yes, across different or uh, across a, a chain of knapsack transactions, uh, the difficulty also increases, similar to the to the process of mining blocks, one bl mining a chain of blocks, right? Uh, do you have any uh, additional numbers about that? Because I agree intuitively that that is true. But do you have any numbers about that? Have you tried that? No, no sorry, that's something I didn't try. Um, and I'd like to add that uh, intuitively, I think that the difficulty or the, the problem would be that uh, if enough people would use this kind of transactions and you had, would have a continuous flow of these transactions, which could create kind of a backlog of coin join transactions that you need to put, uh, to to find the mappings for, um, which is what I mean by it. Uh, in the complexity increases when you have when you use it continuously. The, on the other hand, um, linking, for example, two outputs together could actually be more easy if they both uh, appear again as inputs in at the next coin join transactions. That is one of the one of the open questions, one of the open problems. Okay, thank you. Anyone would like to chime in who did not talk yet? Mm, I only have a couple of basic, maybe a little bit stupid questions. But are you guys intending this knapsack coin join as a method of like payment, uh, for like straight up to for the, uh, for example, on some service or is this like a basic coin join? Like uh, it's, uh, the, the output will come to me, the both outputs. I, I think I can answer this. Um, coin join like like for for payments um, whereas zero link currently uh, does coin joins as the as mixing transactions um, this is actually the question I wanted to ask Felix was um, you know if, if he if he knows anything about how wasabi currently works and what you know the the uh, the distinction between a, a coin join for mixing that and a coin join for sending um, and I feel like having read this paper, I feel like uh, Wasabi being able to send in, in a coin join might, might open doors for more privacy. Um, yeah, to be honest, I didn't know about Wasabi until now because I really I'm not uh, keeping up with the current developments on Bitcoin anymore or uh, other, other um, cryptocurrencies. But uh, yeah, what was my my idea was that actually that's the point of the knapsack mixing, that you can use coin trans trans coin trans transactions for actually performing a transaction that you want to do, and not only for anonymizing coins. So you can in the same step send coins to a third party and do the mixing. Okay, thanks. Oh, one one comment. Just um, it is easy for us if if we one day decide to implement something like this. It is easy because if you mix to yourself, you can generate all the addresses that you need because you know your keys, right? And you can generate your own keys as many as you want. But for payments, you need to be able to generate addresses for someone else many addresses probably by sure more than than 
the payment and the change. You need to to be able to generate more addresses. So um, it is not hard to do, I think, but uh, it is something that uh, it is not so easy with the um, with the existing culture, let's say. Because if I want to pay you, Aviv, uh, I ask you for one address. Uh, imagine I say, okay, uh, uh, Aviv, I want to pay you. Send send me ten of your addresses. <laughs> it, it it is not <laughs> it is unusual, right? So we need something different. Yes, I agree. There are uh, solutions for that, like stat addresses or give me an onion, uh, your onion uh, nodes, uh, onion address, and uh, we can, we could maybe work it out, but uh, it, 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 it's a lot of work, yes. However, maybe it's possible to do a variation of knapsack where you, where you kind of keep the, keep the payment as, as, as it is, but you are only mixing on the changes. It would be an easy, easier thing. Actually, uh, I'm quite sure I've read about, um, special kinds of Bitcoin addresses where you can, for the receiver of the transaction, generate as many ad addresses as you want. And um, I, I don't remember how it was. It was kind of like a, a public-private uh, key scheme where you can generate new addresses and only the receiver is able to use these addresses. I guess the only remaining problem would um, for the receiver to notice transactions which are which contain addresses that belong to him. But I, 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 I will try to find out what they were called. It's, uh, it's or, okay. I, I know too. Um, both of them think, has some very serious trade-offs. Uh, say if it's one of them or if it's not, then I would like to investigate. One is stat addresses. The other one, the stat addresses, you were actually mentioning that in the paper. And the other one is payment codes. Is, is it one of it? No, I'm not sure. I th thought it was something with blind signatures. Um, that that would be actually awesome. If, uh, if there would yeah, be I can. Another scheme. Maybe maybe I'm I'm remember remembering something wrong, but I can try to try try to look it up. Try to find what I was reading. But I thought that that might not be a problem. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Yes, it's 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 a problem, <laughs> but uh, not. Mm. And anyway, uh, I I just like to say that these uh, conversations, I would really like to 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 make these these as a learning conversations and not uh, necessarily how to integrate it or implement it into Wasabi or or have to do anything with Wasabi. Because there are like 600 more papers that I want to review and maybe at the end when, when everything is, we learned about everything, then we can, we can come up with something, something, and then we can use uh, different techniques from different papers. <sighs> what, what I, what my thinking is right now is that it's just a vague idea, but if we could figure out if we could figure out a uh, scaling uh, quality. If if we could make if we could give a number to hey uh, we mix this way and this mix is this efficient. If we could uh, scale the efficiency of the mix, if we could tell how efficient one mix is, then we could come up with a bunch of uh, mixing solutions and we would know that, hey, this this mixing solution give the be best uh, blockchain space per anonymity gained number, right? And what what would be the anonymity gained? What what is this knapsack paper is is doing pretty well that it is 
I was always thinking about just breaking the link with how much anonymity said, but this knapsack paper pointed me that, hey, you actually can break the link between the inputs, you can break the link between the outputs, and of course you can break the link between inputs and outputs. So that 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 makes the 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 anonymity gained metric much better. So that's that's great. All right. Uh, do you guys have any presentations? Um, who, who has presentations here? Uh, so I guess at that point I, I'm going to leave because it's already quite late here. Um, the address in the paper is not my my well, it's not a valid email address anymore. I don't receive emails on that address anymore. But if you have any questions, you can contact me at any time. I send you my new email address in the chat. So feel free to ask me if you have any more questions. Yeah, thank, thanks a lot for, for coming. It, it was a pleasure to... Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> thank it's you always very much. Nice. It's always nice to see that uh, you've done something interesting. <laughs> yes, I'm a big fan of your work. Thanks. <laughs> thank you very much. So thanks and goodbye, maybe until some time later. All right, bye bye. Yeah, I, I was thinking about. Uh, could you, Aviv, show the your presentation again? Yeah, just give me one quick sec here. Yeah. Um, did you have a slide in mind? Uh, yeah. Could you go on the one where is the inputs and outputs? Like, uh, yeah, for for example, this case, uh, what determines the actual numbers of the outputs? Let's say that uh, if this wasn't for payments where there is a exact number or sum required, uh, what, what determines these outputs uh, or the value of them? Yeah, so, um, the, the, so the idea is you would get a more efficient knapsack mix if you just allowed for infinite outputs because they would get very small and then it would take more time to compute. But there's the trade-off that you don't want to have lots of outputs. So the, the simple knapsack idea here was just take regular transactions that have no special features. And for every two transaction, take the larger one, the one with the larger output and break down a large output into two parts where in this case, the number 31 is the difference between the, the, uh, the green and the br uh, orange brown um, v values. So in this knapsack method, you, you only add one output for every two transactions that, that combine. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm back. Um. Yeah, you can go ahead, Lucas. Yeah, yes. Sorry, uh, I lost connection. Okay, what I want to show you is Yes, I uh, call it with uh, Okay, I'm with you. Okay, with three seconds. I don't know if it's going to work. The number of Uh, okay. Okay, well, uh, <clears throat> just <laughs> going back to the uh, Aviv's uh, presentation thing, uh, I was just thinking about, you know, uh, 
if this wasn't for payments and there would be like any kind of uh, set amount that you would have to reach on uh, as output uh, i understand that we wouldn't uh, like to like use too many or break it down into too many utxos but in like in some sense i think it could kind of work i'm not sure if it's just too expensive or something for uh, uh, after wise like combining all these utxos or something like that but you know like breaking it down onto the smallest possible uh, out uh, input that there is uh, and you know not maybe like like the smallest one but you know just uh, breaking it down into smaller and exact the same outputs you know like you could combine uh, many inputs and the fee would go like statically uh, depending on how many inputs you put in and then it would just you know give you either like a, for example a bigger sum or a smaller sum there could be like different kind of uh, knapsack coin joins uh, i'm i'm not sure if i'm explaining this correctly did you guys get any <laughs> any of that I, I think I understand what you're saying. Um, there's some there's some problems with that uh, idea as well. I mean, inefficiency is one of them. But another issue that I see with these knapsack examples is we don't think about how transactions look like over over a longer period of time. So, for example, um, let's say you have many 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 change outputs. Uh, if you decide to then spend many of these change outputs together. In an, in, an, in, an, in, an, in a transaction down the road, um, it undoes all of the privacy gains from the knapsack uh, for the most part. Um, so I think I think those are those are one concern. Is, is there something else you wanted to, to say? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I just uh, thought about this thing uh, right now. So maybe I have to just sit down and think about it a little, little bit more before I, <laughs> I'll try to uh, like uh, verbalize it. But well, uh, another thing was that uh, about the uh, mappings and the computation of, of that, I mean, is that actually necessary for Wasabi to do, or is it like a just beneficial thing if it would take too much time for actually go down uh, on all these mappings? I mean, yeah, let's say that there would be like, uh, let's say five participants, which uh, all are putting like three different inputs and yeah, for example, getting the, well, X amount of outputs. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's only a good thing if the mapping is hard to calculate. M mapping is not necessary to do in order to, to build a system. It's uh, what, what, uh, what's interesting about calculating these mappings is that we can actually see that where are the bottlenecks of blockchain analysis companies so that's that's why i'm interested in calculating the mappings yeah that's what i was thinking also i mean if we could just use it as a benefit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah uh, back back to the for example the idea that i said before that uh, Felix actually estimated the lower lower bound for for the subset sum analysis here and we could say that hey okay we need at least this many inputs and outputs and if uh, if 10 I, I think 10 is pretty let, let's say if if 10 inputs and outputs are present then that already provides computational privacy. So we could set a lower bound for, okay, uh, yeah, we, we, we want to target 10 as the minimum uh, number of participants or something like that. So that's an that's interesting idea, yes. Adam, uh, can I add something uh, b before I have to run uh, here? Um, it seems like a lot of privacy benefits would 
come from having um so so it's it, it, right now we've split the mixing and the sending as two se separate features um but uh it seems like it, uh privacy would be much stronger if uh people that weren't doing mixing could still participate in a wasabi transaction uh it's just something that I, th I thought about. I, I'm not sure I understand. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, so um, why? Uh, <laughs> that there would be like more people uh, linked to the coin joins, even if they don't actually use Wasabi. Yeah, what I mean to say is that uh, um, what if uh, a user just wanted to send someone money uh, and essentially wanted to participate in these knapsack type coin joins uh, for, for spending, um, then that could be a separate service that could be added to Wasabi, right? Like, imagine if the entire blockchain didn't have transactions, but just had lists of inputs and outputs. I think we uh, can agree that it would be computationally very hard for people to successfully uh, unravel uh, the, um, the entire block of inputs and outputs. So I think that's sort of what I was thinking about. Yeah. Uh Yes, um, of course, it's uh, even if you don't do any mixing, right? Um, more problems there are with, let's say, how do you, how do you get all the participants of a block agree on the fee or <laughs> I don't know. And I, the, it raises more questions than it, than it answers, I think. One more thing. Um, the oh, the NAPSAC transactions. Lucas, because Aviv is leaving, uh, before Aviv leaves, uh, can we decide on what, what should be our next, uh, what should be next Monday? What should we, we, we look into? You guys have ideas? No. Coin Shuffle? Alright, uh, Coin Shuffle, one idea. There are some papers that were cited by uh, Felix's uh, paper that I thought were interesting, but... Um, I think Coin Shuffle was one of them. There is, there is also a uh, Coin Join Sudoku from Christovatas. You know, anonymizing the old, uh, old blockchain info shared coin, coin joins uh, that I had in mind. Also, also, secure multi-party computation, which, is, which, which came up in the paper, but I've seen that came up so many times in so many papers, in the coin shuffle paper too, by the way, that I'm just uh, interested what the heck that would be. So anyway, uh, any more ideas or decide on these three now? Or or vote let let's vote on for this three, or or something else in the mix. Do you want to add? I prefer coin shuffle, and there is an, another variant. I don't I don't, I don't remember this. It, it, it is coin shuffle plus plus or something like that. There is it's coin like shuffle. A, there is coin shuffle plus plus, and there is value shuffle which is coin shuffle plus plus with confidential transactions. So anyway, Aviv, uh, let, let, let's go from left to right. Aviv, 
Coin Shuffle, Coin Join Sudoku, Secure Multiparty Computation. I guess I'll uh, vote for Coin Shuffle. Okay, Lucas, Coin Shuffle, Igor? Probably yes, or yes, also Conjun Sudoku, but I think it's, it's pretty much the same that we have discussed today, finding the, the, the partitions. So I don't know if it brings something new to us. Yeah, that that was kind of my idea there that uh, we could we could look at someone else's work on the same topic. That's actually a part of the Napsack paper, and uh, we could we could compare that. That was my idea. So, oh, there is also sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sneakers too. Yeah, sneakers can be too. Yeah, probably sneakers is 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 better than coin shuffle because coin shuffle has a, some some uh, communication schemes that is 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 pretty hard. I don't know if it can be implemented really. So, yeah. Okay, let let let's start it again then, and I I will note how much uh, are the votes and and let's get over with. So. Coin Shuffle is from Team Ruffing and it's about mixing uh, transactions. It's, it's similar to zero link in that sense. Coin Join Sudoku is from Christoph Atlas and it is how do you de-anonymize coin joins. I think it's uh, solving the subset sum problem somehow. Uh, this is this is a smaller thing. Secure multi-party computation. I have no idea what is this, but I think it's it's uh, it's something that will come back because it came back many times. Sneaker is from Adam Gibson, and this is uh, this is coin join. Uh, some some interesting idea to do coin joins. Uh, okay, Aviv coin shuffle, coin join Sudoku. Secure multi-party computation, sneaker, you can vote for multiple things. I think the coin shuffle or the sneaker would be interesting. Okay, coin shuffle one vote, sneaker one vote. Lucas? The sneakers. Only sneaker? Yes. Igor? I cannot hear you. Mm, couldn't couldn't hear anything. Weird noises. I'm, I'm gonna head out. Uh, I, I trust you your judgment to vote, uh, and uh, I'll read whatever is, uh, is submitted for next week. Perfect. See you, Aviv. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. An awesome presentation. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Uh, or would you like to keep your own? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would dive more uh, deeper into what Adam Gibson does on this topic because I know the man and yeah, I'm really curious what he's doing, especially with regards to what you guys are researching. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would for sneakers. All right. Uh, and the naming is, yeah. Raphael? Yeah, I like the idea of shuffle and uh, sneakers. Everyone is hungry, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you with us? Uh, okay. I, I see what you wrote. Okay. You're not familiar with any of. 
All right. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter what I wrote. It's going to be snicker <laughs> because that has four votes. And okay, so it's going to be snicker than the next next meeting. And Lucas, you were saying something that I disrupted you. So go ahead. Yes, yeah, just a comment that those snapsack transactions. Uh, for an observer, an external observer, it is not easy to to realize it is a conjoin because I mean it can be a batch transaction, a pay, a pay to many transactions. I mean in the blockchain there are lots and lots and lots of transactions with more than I don't know five inputs and ten outputs. There are not conjoins, right? So, um, so it is not it is not easy to to know that that's a conjoint transaction. So there, there is not a clear fingerprint. Uh, so you have to to analyze the transaction, and then you say, hey, this transaction has a lot of ambiguity, so it has to be a conjoint transaction. But otherwise, it's it's, it's not easy and okay you know you say okay this is a conjoint transaction a, a knapsack transaction no, no, no. but um, who who has created that transaction or or, 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 uh, or how many participants this has so it's, it's it's not so easy for example uh, in in, in I wasabi we I disagree completely because there are just so many fingerprints in the blockchain that you can tell exactly which wallet created that transaction by just looking at the end lock time, let's say, you know. Yes, 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 sure. Uh, it is possible. But anyway, it's, you, for example, cannot know so easily how many participants are uh, in wasabi it is easy because you you count how many equal outputs are if there are 66 equal outputs then there are 66 participants in this case it's a bit harder so it's it's something to have in mind uh, by the way, if I can ask a weird question, then uh, what did you mean, uh, Nopara, about uh, being able to know which wallet created the transaction by the end lock time? That different wallets are using different fees, different end lock times. They either use it or not, or they either use a specific number. They might bump the transaction able to do RBF. You see, there is a set of features. Those features sometimes have like a run on a, let's say the fee. You have to decide what fee you will do in the transaction. And if that fee, that exact fee, that transaction is being made with, can only be produced with uh, with Electrum. Electrum is a bad example because Electrum, Bitcoin Core, and Wasabi is kind of can produce each other's fees. But if that can only be produced with Electrum, then then it's going to be a transaction with Electrum. Okay, so now we figured out that this is a transaction with Electrum. Now we have to just apply our heuristic that what is the likelihood that this Electrum is going to create a pay to endpoint transaction. So, 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 so that's what I'm saying that uh, there are so many metadata in the transactions that you can probably tell what wallet created it. Mm, okay. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. I was fighting a lot against it previously, but I just realized it's 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 not possible to to hide anything because there is always something.
And if I may ask another stupid question is, uh, what exactly is analog time? And uh, I mean, I think I've heard about it, but I just don't remember anything. Or what does it like conclude? Lucas? Is when that transaction can be mined, basically. You say, okay, this transaction can be mined right now, it can be mined um, after this block high. So basically that's all. It's a field in the transaction where you specify when that transaction can be mined. Okay, yeah, all right, thanks. For, for example, uh, Bitcoin Core and Electrum are using an n lock time that is in order to discourage fee sniping, which whatever it is, it's not on top of my mind, but you know, like things like this. Or the RBF, that's like if you send a transaction and you have RBF enabled, then only that information that this transaction can do RBF. Uh, just, okay, now look at which wallets can do RBF and it must be, it's probably from those wallets. Now, if you do an RBF transaction, if you bump the fee, then, oh, that's a lot more information to expose because you can only bump the fee uh, from removing the change then you just exposed where you are sending the money, which would be exposed by the transaction chain anyway later on. But you just exposed at that point where you are sending the money. And if the fee bump has such a specific number that, oh, okay, uh, let's say Bitcoin Core always bumps the fee with this number or with this fee rate, then... Uh, then you can you can further narrow the range of possible wallets that can 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 do that. So it gets really really bad. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I get it. And with RBF, you like uh, expose which one of uh, the addresses or outputs are like uh, the actual change. Yes, yes, right. That that might be the most obvious one. I didn't even yeah. do this for a very long time. But then things just start to click, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. All right. Uh, what What else do we have? Um, Napara, I have a question. Um, you said about the paper that about that had information about confidential assets and mixing or something like that. You mentioned it like five minutes ago or something. Yes, I was explaining. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was explaining the history of, of Coin Shuffle. It started with Coin Shuffle. Then they, they came up with a new protocol that doesn't require Tor that's called Dice Mix. And they incorporated it into Coin Shuffle, and they called it Coin Shuffle Plus Plus. And then they figured out how to do Coin Shuffle with confidential transactions, and that is called Value Shuffle. Uh, can you send me a reference link or something on that? I'm already done the go in it, but it could be a bit faster and more helpful. Uh, just Google Shuffle Google, plus plus? Just Google value shuffle. Oh, oh, wait, what? Value shuffle. Okay. Uh, are you interested in coin shuffle plus plus? Uh, well, I'm interested in mixing and confidential assets involvement in that because it is, well, I want to know if there is something that I can bring for RGB. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that we could could review uh, later on. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Well, that could be the topic that I might be prepared for. So yeah, thanks for explaining that again. 
I'm a god. Yeah, bring it to next episode and we will see. I think there is some some interesting things uh, to learn from me too. I would, sure. I would give you a vote for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thanks. All right. Uh, do you guys have anything else? No. Nothing. Not I have my homework. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Next next uh, episode is going to be sneaker, uh, and yeah, thank, thanks for coming. And I I will I will publish it to I don't know where uh, if if the recording is good I will publish it to probably the Wasabi channel and 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 and, and we we'll see I, I, what what are your thoughts about uh, how, how was this so far did you enjoy it uh, do you have any recommendations how to how to improve these conversations at least uh, Abi uh, Abi's presentation was pretty damn good in my opinion. I mean, like a short recap of uh, what was what and uh, what's the point of knapsack, knapsack. So it makes a pretty good like a uh, yeah just a a video in itself. But of course, also these talks too. Yeah, I I was kind of afraid that Felix are going is going to leave. We, we have to grab Felix at the beginning because <laughs> he's gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes, it, it, from my from my point of view, um, the participation of Felix was great. So, if for sneakers we can have the if we can have Adam here, it could be great too. I will ask him. I can't uh, can't promise. Felix didn't promise it to either. He he said he will try. So that's why I didn't even send out a tweet or anything. Hey, Felix is going to be here because if he's not, <laughs> anyway, I I will tell Adam to to come. Yeah, definitely. I I hope he can. Yeah. Yeah, I think this format was very good. When on the on one hand you had a person within the team who introduced the brief recap of the article, and then on the other hand you had the actual author of the article that could like, contribute online and fix mistakes, misunderstandings, and everything. And also knowing that he's not working anymore, like Felix is not working anymore, for example, for on this topic is also valuable because you kind of understand where it goes and what questions he can cover and which questions probably should be covered by someone else. So yeah, having an author of paper is very, very good here. And of course the discussion afterwards as always, just marvelous. All right, guys. So if no one has anything, then thank you all for coming. And if this is published and you're listening it on YouTube or something, then uh, definitely everything everything that we talked about, uh, the paper, Felix's code, our code, uh, everything is going to be in the description. So you can follow up and maybe change the world by by by, by getting some ideas. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. Uh, bye bye. Thank you all. All right, bye thank bye. you. Bye. -bye. bye.